Okay, hey everyone. Uh, we're back for part three of Oak D plus Touch Designer, uh, looking at some more functions of the Oak D um, AI powered camera. We're gonna look at uh, Tiny Yolo object detection this time. Uh, so Yolo and Tiny Yolo are object detection models uh, that are made for real time applications. Uh, the default model that is uh, set on the Oak D was trained uh, to recognize 80 different objects. Uh, so let's, um, let's maybe understand a little bit of what YOLO is. So it stands for you only look once. Ha ha ha. Um, and it was meant to be a, uh, a very fast um, model. Uh, so it's, there's lots of different object detection models out there. Um, so RC and the convoluted neural networks, uh, RCNNs, uh, so SSDs, retina. So you might have seen these other terms perhaps. Um, some of them are a lot more accurate, but they are pretty slow, so it can't really use it for, for uh, real-time feeds, let's say. Uh, but YOLO is very fast. Um, it can even be, you know, on some applications, up to you know, 60 to 100 frames per second, uh, analyzing the frames. Um, but it is less accurate. Uh, and to quantify that um, in the initial uh, report by Redmond et al., which is right here, uh, the people that researched uh, on this um, and contributed their, their sense of humor, I guess. Um, they uh, listed the mean average precision for YOLO at around 50 some percent. Uh, tiny YOLO, which is what the Oak D camera uses, is not so great. Uh, it's only 23.7%. Uh, so, uh, keeping that in mind, uh, then it's not going to be super duper accurate. Uh, we can still find it really useful for certain applications. Um, so, let's have a look at what those could be. Uh, so, we'll need to, uh, parts one and two, we'll be using the same requirements, dependencies uh, that we went through in those. So, if you haven't looked at that, go through those first. That kind of covers the basics. We'll be using NDI also. Um, and we'll be using PyCharm again uh, and um, using a virtual environment. So you can use the same one that we set up in part one, or you can use a new one. If you create a new one, you have to kind of go through it and install the dependencies again, because that's a new environment. It will not have the same uh, dependencies that we installed before. Uh, so if we go over to PyCharm, um, maybe what I'll do here. Oh, so here I've got this running here, so it's currently uh, running something. Let's, let's just close that for a second. And we can see I'm in here in the terminal in PyCharm, and let's actually, let's go up a level. So I'm inside the examples folder of the Depth AI Python uh, download, and we can see, here's the examples in uh, parts one and two, we looked at stereo depth and color camera, and right now we're gonna look at YOLO. So Back into YOLO and to run it, um, just as before, Python 3. And we will run the example that came with the download. And uh, it says here, so you're using Tiny YOLO v4. Uh, there's also a version 3 uh, for whatever subtle reason you need to version 3, um, that, that is possible also. Uh, and so let's go here. Okay, so. Now, uh, we can get a sense of the accuracy uh, of, of all this because this thing, which to me looks an awful lot like a cup, um, it is confused of whether it's a toilet or a cup, um, which seems like an important difference. If we go over, you know, moving around, what is it now? So it's toilet and maybe a car, which is, okay, that's, that's great. If it's upside down, so now it's like doesn't even doesn't even recognize it as, as like anything. Let's see if we can get cup back. Okay, so that's that's mostly a cup. So I'm I'm happy with that. Um, so that's that's just showing you um, the accuracy of that. Um, but what are what are the objects that it can detect? So it, we're here inside our tiny yellow.py. Uh, and we go down to an array called label map. So here are the 80 objects that it can detect. Um, so it's meant to be mostly quotidian uh, type objects that you might encounter. 
uh, commonly. Um, so if you're running this example, um, you know, look around your house, try to find these objects and just give it a, give it a test and see how well it can detect. Um, I will say, uh, you know, I, I set up a little makeshift um, background here with the, like black paper for the, for the bottom and for the background. Um, it seems to work a lot better uh, with a very plain background. If you have, um, even though it's supposed to still detect it um, in context with a kind of noisy, everyday photographic background, uh, I do think it, it recognizes it better um, if you simplify the environment. So that's cool and all, um, but you know, if we just have things in this window, we can't really use it for, for anything, right? So let's learn how to send this to Touch Designer. And I'm going to hit Q to close that. Uh, and so for video, we use the NDI Python, which I covered in part two, so nothing new there. For sending data, uh, we're going to use Python OSC, uh, which is super easy, great um, library. All we need to do is do this pip install Python OSC in our terminal. Uh, so I have already done that. Uh, but just to show what we do here, so we would just do pip install Python OSC, right? Boom, boom. That's all it takes. Uh, and then that would install it just for this virtual environment. So keep that in mind. Um, and then once that is uh, installed, uh, we need to integrate that into our code. And so there's three different spots um, that we need to, to add things to edit our tinyyellow.py code. So I have already done that here in a file called tinyyellowedit02.py. Uh, so the first thing is, if we look up here in all the imports, so I've added these two things. So I, this is also where the NDI import would live. Uh, so from Python OSC, import UDP client. Uh, and then we need to initialize the connection. So we go down a little bit. And basically, this line here is a kind of initialization of the device. Um, and so this gets run once. Uh, so here we see uh, this is where we initialized our UDP client. Um, if you have used OSC before, you should be uh, very familiar with these type of values. Uh, so this is an IP address and this is the port number. So uh, 127.0.0.1 is the uh, default address for localhost, which is this computer. Um, you could also send it to another computer on the same network. Um, you just find like some of the laptop over there, let's say, if you're on the same Wi-Fi network. Um, get their IP address of the recipient and put that in right here and it will work. Uh, and the port number is arbitrary, but it must match the, the sender and receiver. Uh, so we see also my NDI stuff here, uh, which is the same as in the previous tutorial. Great. Uh, and then we just need to send those values. Um, and that is this client.send message. Uh, and then we say a channel name, and then what is the value that we are sending um, is, is what that is. Okay, cool. Uh, so that, that needs to happen within a loop because it needs to happen uh, every single frame. Uh, so if we have a look here, let's see, okay, so that's within a function called display frame because that's what's actually, if we look here, th so this was all standard. I'll go back to the, the this is the default um, file that came with everything. Go display frame, so it had, this is what's actually creating the blue bounding box. Uh, that was in our little window. Um, it's putting the text for confidence, it's putting the label, and it's drawing a rectangle around that. So by seeing that, you know, this looks awfully a lot like, oh, that must be my four points of my box, right? It looks like bounding box. Uh, and then detection.label, oops, don't mess that up. Um, detection label looks like that must be my class name, I'm guessing, because this is label map, which is my array that was up there and then kind of getting a certain index of that array should be up here, right? So picking the index of that to grab the string of whatever is recognized. So, okay, display frame seems to be where I wanna be to, to grab those values. 
Um, let's see what happens here. So while true, so this is like looping forever uh, until we break it. And so now we can kind of see, okay, this is where display frame gets called. Uh, so it gets, it's, it gets called every single uh, frame until we, we break it by hitting Q. So, okay, I think I like this. That's where we need to put it. So that's what we did. So we took this client um, send message and put it within um, our loop here. So if there's multiple detections, uh, it will do that for each um, object that it detects. And that should be it. Um, how did we find out these magic OSC words? And that's just basically on this Python OSC, uh, we see simple client, simple server, and, and this is where we um, got our code here for um, the simple things we need to do. Client send message, client right there, right? So kind of detecting all of that from that example. So let's see what happens. Let's run this one. So let's do, oops, don't do that. Nope. Okay. Python 3. And I'm already in YOLO, so let's do tiny YOLO edit 02.py. Okay, cool. All right, so this I don't really care about this time, so I'm going to like shove that over there. Let's go into touch designer, run into touch designer, and voila, we have um, things coming in here. So OSCN chop port 9000 is getting my my bounding box values that I need there. Um, I could have only used the OSCN dats, but I, I had already done the chop. Uh, uh, to get the string value of the, the class name, you need the OSC and dat. Um, so I just kept it like that because I already had the chop going, so whatever. But we're not actually using these bottom four. Um, but to parse this uh, class cup uh, thing, I've got just a little few things happening here, right? To just kind of use this convert dat, select to get it down to just the string that I want. Uh, and let's. Let's see how this looks here. So let's do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here for a while, so I'll, I'll go away for a moment. Let's see what else we can detect. So it removes, goes away, great. And let's do, how about that one? Bird, cool, it's a little origami thing. Uh, so half the time it says airplane, which is kind of cute. Still a bird, cool. Still a bird, still a bird. Okay, that's pretty cool. Upside down, umbrella, no it's not. Now it's an airplane, cool, okay. So depending on the angle, it thinks differently. Um, it's kind of cool. Just by hand, it can tell that I'm a person, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the idea of doing this in Touch Designer is, um, you know, maybe we want to have certain triggers. Uh, maybe we, out of that list of 80 objects, there's a few magic objects that you want to trigger certain audiovisual mm -hmm. things. Sensors. Cool. <laughs> or toothbrush. <laughs> it's it's a little it's not sure. Control. Skateboard. I think it thinks it's more of a toothbrush, but uh, it hit fork just once, so that was enough to trigger the sound. Great. Uh, and you know, touch designer people, I wouldn't neglect to put the famous banana. There it is. Um, so that is just, uh, you know, as far as the actual touch designer uh, network here, it's nothing too difficult. I've got the, the class. Uh, coming in, and then a dat execute, which is testing which of those three magic words uh, is coming in, and then pulsing three different audio file ends to play those different uh, audio files. Um, and uh, just little little Python tricks like the uh, the classes are all uh, listed as lowercase, and for my little text thing up here, I wanted to all caps, so I just did a little 
a little bit of Python and uh, evaluate that right there to make it upper. Um, and also I wanted in case, um, so by default, if I remove this banana, there we go. Okay, great. So I made it so it disappears. By default, uh, we can see kind of over here, uh, the, the last string and bounding box location would still remain, uh, which is not what I wanted. So we just kind of just set up this um, with the OC in that, I've got an info. So right now it's not cooking. Okay, cool. So while it is detecting something, we can see this thing is cooking. Uh, so I just did a little logic on when value changed. Great. That is resetting a speed. Uh, so my speed chop is, is never really able to get to get to a high value. If um, if it does go above a certain value, uh, my logic here. So basically, if, if there's no objects for two seconds, logic uh, is triggered back to zero, and this switches my uh, what I do a switch top over here. Yeah, just a switch top. Uh, so that's just like a little extra little thing too to. Um, make it all disappear. Uh, but that is about it, right? So um, fairly simple. Um, you can just imagine, you know, deal with the inaccuracy of the whole thing. And um, you can still create certain triggers that could work pretty well. Okay, thanks. Uh, next part, we'll look at custom image training models. And we're going to use something called RoboFlow.com, which is super exciting.